A very good morning once again and many thanks for staying with us right here on Morning at NTV. My good friend, the Lord Mayor of Kampala, Arias Lukwago, is already with us right here in our humble studio and is ready to give us some information pertaining to the school fires that have become rampant within our country. Uh, since January of 2022, 8 to 10 cow and, and counting fires have gutted several schools within our country right here in Uganda. Two in Kawempe, three in Kampala and counting and uh, many are wondering, is this a case of arson or are they just accidents in the last two years when schools were closed we had anticipated that when many were actually reopening they'll be given some kind of money to actually help them you know prepare for the reopening change electrical wires that were faulty at some point and you know just make ensure that the place is actually safe for the learners but many schools do not have that luxury or the money to expedite that process they continued Life was normal, so now the school fires have become rampant, just like Morning at NTV had anticipated before the reopening of the schools, if schools hadn't been bankrolled with money to do just that. The Lord Mayor is here, and let's get this conversation underway. Very good morning, Lord Mayor. Thank you good, for joining us. Good morning, my brother and the viewers. It's been a long time. How have you been? Yeah, indeed. I'm <coughs> pushing mm. on against all odds. Indeed. Of course, you know the challenges mm. are with us. Indeed. But all the same, we have to move on. Life has to continue. Indeed. Yeah. Bilal Islamic Primary and Secondary School was gutted by a fire Sunday night uh, through Monday morning in the wee hours. We also did see a week ago Good Times Infantry Infant at, uh, School that is in uh, Kawempe. Kawala. Kawala, yes. Kawala also yeah. being gutted by a fire. And so many other schools have been gutted since January Kawempe, 2022. Yes, yes mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. Why does this keep happening? A case of arson, accidents. Well, it's a question on everybody's mm. mind because we are wondering why these rampant fires, why there is a pattern the way they happen, mm. why the laxity on the part of police in taking uh, actions and doing thorough investigations. All these are questions which are begging for answers. Unfortunately, the answers are not forthcoming. And it, that's what is worrying us. Mm. And in most cases, we, you, in, the, in the scenes that we have visited, personally, I've tried my level best, you get horrifying stories. Before the incidents happen, there are things that point to something mm -hmm. uh, like fire about to break out. Uh, the most recent, for example, the one which happened the, the other night at Bidali here. Mm -hmm. We are told there is an explosion that went off, uh, suggesting that probably um, somebody had uh, uh, like oil, like uh, petrol, and um, it was something that was planned according to the nar narrations we got from the people. But what would be the motive? Th that's what one would be no, asking. Beca before right I come now. to the mm. motive, <coughs> even mm. it was the similar case in Nansana, mm. I'd rather in uh, Kawala, good mm. times, mm. because my interaction with the management clearly indicated they also got signals. Because a day before, it happened on the Monday, mm. but on Sunday, there were similar attempts at a different dormitory, but they, had, they managed to nip it in the bud in time. But this w the, the following morning, uh, rather evening, mm. the worst happened, and we lost a kid there. Indeed. And so was the case in the fire which took place in Chotera where we even lost some lives. And uh, here we lost, I think, four in a Kawempe at Chibedi. And uh, like uh, what I've said, the pattern indicates that this is a case of arson. You're asking what could be the motive. Mm. This is the reason police should investigate because that is their responsibility. We can have so many leads to this. There are things they can do for example, apart from the motive, to establish whether indeed these are arsonists, arsonists who are doing it. That is, to me, I'm not an expert in mm. that field, but I think it is a very simple thing to do, mm. given the advanced technology we have. I, I called Ms. <coughs> Charles Twinner yesterday, the CID so a spokesperson. Mm. Uh, we were trying to get the director of fire to come for this morning show today. And he was telling me that many of these cases are accidents that's what he was saying and no, i told him i was talking to the lord mayor and he was telling me it's a case of arson but for him he's stuck onto the uh, issue of accident you see until they conduct what we call mm. a forensic examination <coughs> mm. 
we shall not believe their stories. Indeed. Uh, because uh, if somebody has used the petrol, for example, it's difficult. Uh, I mean, it's easy to use forensic mm. uh, technology to examine that, and you tell us. Mm. Because that is the largely the weapon the assassins use. Mm. Uh, in the case of Chotera, they were seen moving around, hovering around, those who are patrolling the area, those who are doing uh, military science, what they call reconnaissance, mm. to see how the whole mission would be orchestrated, be executed. They were seen within the vicinity. And then the fires happened. They reported all this. So like I've told you, if there was an explosion in mm. the case of Birari, they could easily tell from forensic examination. So they have not done so. What they are telling us, it could be either their gut feeling or some defensive kind of uh, statement because mm. they, are not, they have not commissioned those teams to do that kind of investigation mm. that we really need. In uh, a country that uh, has systems in place and that respects uh, the dictates of the law, mm. This would be the appropriate time now to have a kind of a commission of inquiry. Commission of inquiry. Uh, multifaceted because they may not be having those experts on their part. But it, it, you know, it would need some people with a legal mind, to need people who are trained in forensic examination, the experts in that area, those who deal with the fires and so on and so forth. <coughs> you do a same <coughs> team mm. to conduct that kind of investigation. Indeed and give us a report. Otherwise, we shall just be counting events as they happen. And of course, we've been counting events as they happen. In yes. 2008, between April and June, 33 fires were registered in 29 schools. And if we didn't get uh, a commission of inquiry at that time or investigations at that time, what makes you think, Mr. Lord Mayor, that this time round they will be actually investigating the true cause of this problem? It seems like they're just waiting for another school to be gutted and it's business as usual. That's why I'm expressing my concerns mm. here and skepticism about uh, getting to the root of mm. this problem. And uh, in most cases, when we express such sentiments, you are quick to accuse of being mm. lamenters all the time. I'm not here to lament, but to point the way forward. Highlight an issue. Highlight mm. the uh, very pertinent and mm. serious issue, matters touching the security and safety of our children and schools, Indeed. and which call for serious action. I talked to the DPC of Kawempe yesterday when I met him at the scene. They had sealed off, cordoned off the scene. But I asked him, are you really getting the samples from here? Mm. All he had was just a team of firefighters, not calling in the investigators. And that was wrong. Because in the course of doing all that, you may even destroy the evidence. So they needed to conduct it jointly. That's the way I understand it as mm. a layman. So this rarely happens, and you, or had it happens rather, and you tend to think that probably they know one or two things about what is happening. I'm sorry to read too much into mm. this, and I don't want to sound like I'm making oil delegations, but they seem to be knowing one or two things about what is happening. You believe it, because the investigators might know. Yeah, there is too <coughs> much like it's on their part. And uh, it, it needs to be explained why they are laid back in terms of investigations, mm. in terms of pushing for action. Have you heard of any arrests being made? If it were like uh, these other cases happening, for example, uh, incitement to violence, mm. they are quick to arrest. If it was a riot, you will see them rounding off the place, arresting so many people and so on and so forth. In the case of Vijambia in Masaka, they mm -hmm. went as far as even arresting MPs like Sejirinya, uh, Sewanyan and others. But mm. in, in, uh, with matters to do with burning of schools, setting schools ablaze, tell me one arrest that has been effected. Are mm -hmm. they that weak? <coughs> Did we learn any lessons from the Buddha fire, Lord Mayor? Learning, there is a lot to a lot of lessons we need to pick from mm. this. Uh, when it happened at Chibedi, for example, in Kawempe, Indeed. the management was told to please remove the burglars from the dormitories, from the windows. 
to allow his escape in case of fire outbreak. Mm. That sounded, <laughs> sounded reasonable and irrational. But again, all the schools were directed to do so. And when I, I visited the Kawempe, I mean, uh, Virali yesterday, we were told it's a double-edged sword. Because even the arsonists can easily get access mm -hmm. when you are all away. Because for the case of Birari, it happened when all the learners had assembled somewhere. In the dining hall. In the, yes. Mm -hmm. Nobody, of course there are those uh, stubborn uh, who mm -hmm. may hide within the dormitories, mm -hmm. but nobody in this particular case was behind. No, okay. Not even a single student. Mm -hmm. All of them were out of mm -hmm. the dormitories. So you wonder how it happened. Because now they are telling us, look, probably somebody gained access to the dormitories because there are no burglar proofs. But the burglar proofs, why they were removed, it is because they want, in the case of fire, quicker exit. to quickly run out. Mm. So that's one thing we need to look at. Fire extinguishers. Smoke detectors. Smoke detectors, exactly. Actually, what's most important are smoke mm. de detectors. Mm. You, so that you can easily get the alarm. Indeed. Triggered. Yeah. Mm. The, the triggers, you can get those triggers immediately, and then you get, it should be mandatory. Mm. Starting with the public schools, because the government can afford. I'll tell you, in all the 79 schools we have here in the company, you ask how many have gotten those uh, triggers, those uh, uh, alarms. Mm. Very few. Very few. And this is quite important, and it's absolutely necessary. Mm. But also, the security at schools at both private and public schools. With the private schools, they need to, I think, all of them it should be mandatory. They, they, they should be able to get um, private guards. It's very few schools where the school fees uh, little down. But in many of these schools, parents pay handsomely. Uh, I don't want uh, my people in Virali to think that I'm being too critical mm. and harsh. No, because mm. for at, le at least for them, mm. the structure, the fee structure is a, a bit fair. fair mm. Yes, but uh, in other schools, they are quite astronomical, very high. And uh, I believe they can afford to hire services of private security guards. Of course, that is not uh, absolute uh, protection mm. because there can also be cases of connivance. But at least that is a starting point. And even if it's an act of arson, arsonists, certainly there is somewhere to start from. There is somebody to hold the responsible mm. that how could this happen? Given the fee structure, come and account mm. to us. <coughs> Given the fee structure at Bilal, uh, it's like you're alluding to the fact that they may not be in a position to buy all this firefighting equipment that we are talking about vis-a-vis -vis the other schools that might yeah, have sure. the at money because for the, of case the of school Bilal. fee structure. Mm. So, what kind of role can government play in helping such schools that may not have the money to put in place such preventive measures? You Isn't see, that where you government should you step see, in? You see. There is a need to subsidize schools, not even imposing mm -hmm. taxes. But unfortunately, the government imposes taxes mm -hmm. on private schools. These are facilities that augment mm -hmm. the services of government. Actually, they are filling a void. Under normal circumstances, it's an obligation for government to provide the education mm -hmm. to our children. Because the Constitution under Chapter 4, the Bill of Rights, <laughs> makes education one of the fundamental rights. Indeed. Kids have got a right to access quality education. Indeed. And now it becomes the obligation of the state to guarantee that I get that right as mm. a kid. Because I'm a minor. I can't think for myself. Now, to leave that entirely in the hands of private individuals, it's abdicating your duty as a government. It's an abdication of duty, a constitutional duty. Mm. So there should be some, sub rather some uh, support. Mm. That should be given, uh, and uh, even if it's given any kind, mm. not in terms of money. Mm. Here they can say we shall take pick the bills for fire extinguishers, 
for the triggers, alarms, hmm. uh, and also for uh, security, to pay the security guards and so on and so forth. So that should be a given. That should be a standard. Hmm. We Mr. Lord Mayor, the viewer is wondering, should we always act when only problems befall our nation, our state? In December of 2021, we came out on this morning show and we said, if you do not give money to these schools, Ministry of Education, government, they won't be in a position to put in place preventive measures that will go a long way in preventing the spread of COVID-19, the school fires, and so many other issues within the school system. Ministry of Education said we do not have money to give to schools. Instead, we saw some 100,000 going to the teachers, some of whom received it, some did not. Do we have a, co a government that really cares for its people? You Do see, they only come out when people are dead and crying? We are tired of that excuse. Mm. Individuals like myself, time and again, we are accused of lamenting. But the worst lamenter in this government is the scenario regime. Everything. They are talking about narrow resource envelope. We have a narrow resource envelope. You see the crisis in the public transport, narrow resource. The, the flood is in the city, narrow envelope. Now the crisis in the schools, in the crisis in the hospitals, crisis in the agricultural sector. They are talking about a narrow envelope. But they are swimming in a lot of money up there. So I heard. Why I heard is because we are not getting our priorities right. That's the problem. We are not getting our priorities right. And I don't know why they are giving a lip service to education. And uh, I'm sorry, it may sound political. But it's wrong to get the head of state to put his wife in charge of such a very critical sector. Because there is, then you will not click, uh, crack the whip in situations where there is a default. You don't blame her? for actually mismanaging the situation because she's your wife. You That's see, what you're saying. You see, supervision is one critical element mm. in the management. Supervision. And in certain situations, it may call for tough action. Lord Mayor, it's like you're saying the problem is the Minister of Education, Janet Kataham Seveni. Of course, everything starts with the head. That's why always I have to take the blame for the mess in the city. Mm for the mess, and I, I explain now uh, where I have failed, where there are problems, and that's the reason I always come here. You ask me, because if there is any mm. issue in the Kampala to do with the management of cases, you will start with me. Mm. And that's why we are headed. So the this. institutional responsibility <coughs> lies with the minister. And the first line of action when you are the head of state, if there is an issue like this, mm -hmm. The f first person to, hel to be held accountable is the minister. Where has she so failed? W w no, I'm starting with the president mm. himself. All right. Where he failed, where he went wrong, is to put his wife in charge of mm -hmm. a very important sector like that one. I see. Because this needs, uh, I mean, um, uh, like I've told you, tough action in the case of default. Because of his sensitivity, Anything that goes wrong mm. affects not only one learner, but it can be the entire generation. You get the whole point. Mm. The entire generation can get affected. And even if it's one learner, that kid's life is destroyed permanently. You get it? And the remedy. Some remedial action right. may be taken, mm. but <coughs> at times it's difficult. Like mm. those who have lost their lives in fire. Like those who have lost even their belongings, the notes they have been using, they are can, they are in candidate class, mm. they have been co getting notes. So how are they going to retrieve that material to be able to prepare mm. for the exams which, which are just months away? You get the whole problem. Indeed. So even the trauma they get. I reached uh, good times in Kawara. These are little ones. The one who died was in P6. Indeed. And the rest, these small kids were really traumatized. And I advised them, please, the, these people may need psychosocial support. You need to get some counselors mm. to help them at least get out 
get over that incident. And that shouldn't be a recommendation, Mr. Lord Mayor, but to have these councillors in there. Even in December of 2021, we said each and every school should have a councillor. Not only because of these school fires, but they're, they're also the issue of COVID-19, the issue of these uh, young teens who have been, you know, wrapped up in the last two years and they're now coming back into the school system. They needed mm. some psychological help from these teachers or uh, psychologists within the school setting. So if they are not there, then that is a bigger problem. It's a difficult one, of course, because we needed to roll out mm. an education master plan countrywide. Oftentimes, you people focus on the curriculum. But curriculum is just a small, actually, curriculum is not the blueprint for the education. Mr. We Mr. had, Mr. yes, we had uh, the much hyped Kajubi report. You remember the Kajubi report? Mm -hmm. Professor Kajubi said Yes. That was a very good starting point. When government commissioned that investigation, that study, mm -hmm. and the Professor Senteza Kajubi came up with that comprehensive report, that team, on how we can restructure the education system in this country. Unfortunately, it has been bungled up, extremely bungled up. And th that's why we have reached this point where we are, mm -hmm. where most of the learners, majority, are in the hands of private schools, mm -hmm. which shouldn't be the case. We're supposed to have majority in public schools. Mm -hmm. And that's why in the city here, we have our education plan. Because you'll ask me, mm -hmm. okay, for you, what, ha what have you done? Mm -hmm. we, for us, we worked out that blueprint for Kampala mm -hmm. and provided for model schools. Even in the current budget, we put their funds for model schools mm -hmm. in each and every, um, uh, every division. At least we put their one model school can you imagine since this government came into power no single school has been constructed in Kampala all these schools you see Uganda Road, Bati Valley Shirisa Natal, Damatal they, they, they have been in existence <coughs> they were there before and we told them look here what you are doing this country a very big disservice if in a space of less than 70 years at least the colonialists managed to construct those schools and the subsequent independence government also tried their best. How about you have had 36 solid years, mm -hmm. not having even a single school, a new one constructed in Kampala here? That's an absurd, it's an indictment on this government. So we told them, please, let's have model schools in Kampala. That can serve as a, uh, Pirates, they can be pilot projects. And uh, we can pick it up from there. And what you really need in each and every model school, mm -hmm. the facilities that you need to guarantee quality education and, and uh, 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 bringing, you know, an all round bringing up of our, our, our mm -hmm. kids. It's important, including extra curricular activities being provided for. Like we said, you will be amazed. Every school must be having an amphitheater. Indeed. In the Kampala, how many? The one we had in Shimon, the Sh Shimon was destroyed. What happened to Shimon? We have, we are, we now, the only school, I think, with the, an amphitheater here in the Kampala, because for us, we're in charge of primary school, not secondary schools. We have uh, uh, Chitante. I don't know whether you have seen the amphitheater there. Indeed. It's a very beautiful one. Mm -hmm. Chitante Primary School. Every school must be, be having even a swimming pool. A, sw right. a swimming <coughs> pool. Mm -hmm. A playground. All these other... Uh, uh, actually, a tennis court, bas basketball, what? All those sorts of di uh, sporting disciplines. And so on and so forth. So it's a whole list of those facilities we need in mm. such a model school. But here we are with schools that are congested, dormitories are congested, and it's one of the and reasons And the other policy we numbers. needed to pick mm. out of this, the congestion. The congestion. Mm. Like uh, we said in our KCCA schools, we are phasing out asbestos. Mm. We need to phase out 
these triple deckers. The triple deckers need to go, and it was a recommendation that was put forward by the police. Two deckers are the only way to go. We shall expand more on this conversation shortly after this break. I still do have the Lord Mayor of Kampala, but I still do have the Lord Mayor of Kampala, Arias Lukwago. Let's talk about what leaders ought to be doing, just in case these are arsonist attacks, to ensure that this is a problem no more. Lord Mayor. Well, it's the obligation of the police mm. to detect and fight crime. Mm. Arson is a felony. In law, we call it a felony. Mm. A very serious offense, mm. an aggravated kind of offense. Mm. But uh, it has not been accorded the kind mm. of treatment we really need as leaders by the police. There's too much lucky stuff, as I said earlier. Mm. So it becomes a bit difficult on our part to to come in. If it were just a policy matter, probably you'd say yes, that is the intervention we should make. You'd mm. be suggesting interventions. But increasingly, like I've said, the evidence on bo uh, coming mm. out clearly indicates these are acts, on of, acts of arsonists. Mm. So what do you do under such circumstances? Oh, when the market has been gutted one too many times, case of arsonists it, doing it the same. It has been happening. It has been happening one too many times. So conclusively, what schools. kind of steps can we put in yeah. place to ensure that these situations never unfold within our country? Well, it is twofold. Getting the police to, co to refocus mm. their attention on the mandate uh, imposed on them under the Constitution. Mm. Because now they are preoccupied with things which are not within the realm of their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Things like uh, clap, clapping down on political actors, uh, just they, they are hunting down him with his left, right, center to pick him, mm -hmm. just one person because he's over years, hunting down Semakad and the others, uh, getting the Sewanyanas and the Sejirinyas. Mm -hmm. They should get away from that. Uh, you know, in other words, what I'm saying. They have invested a lot of resources mm. in politics, human mm. and, cap and monetary, in politics, in persecution, mm. rather than dealing with the issues of law and order mm. and security for our people. And that is important. The other thing is broadly the government. There are things that not need not be left entirely in private hands. Mm. There are three key things. Three key things which are really a state obligation. Mm. Security. S of course, the private s uh, entities can come in to help. But security is a mandate of the state, national security. Mm. Two, health. Health. These health facilities. You can imagine, uh, Romeo, you are mm. sick. You go to a private hospital. You are in their need of uh, I mean, urgent attention or you are in an ICU case. But they tell you before you pay, we cannot put our gadgets and machines on you. That is dangerous. Mm. This is why I'm saying the state is abdicating its duty. Third, education. Those three, mm. education. Like I've told you, I cited the, 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 the chapter four of the mm. constitution. Education is a right. And it's you, the state, to guarantee that I get quality mm. education. So this shouldn't be left entirely in the ha Even where there is a void, like I said, and the private entities, individuals, mm. investors come in to help and provide that mm. service, government should make some deliberate policies to intervene mm. in terms of providing some concessions, in terms of providing some uh, support, mm. one way or the other. Is it possible for the city mayors in the various jurisdictions within this country to come up with city ordinances that can compel the members of the police force and other public servants to put in place preventive measures that can go a long way in alleviating this problem? Yeah, for us, we are doing mm. our best. Laws. W with a limited mandate. Them. If they are focusing on politics, could we have a law to compel them to look at the other side on other issues affecting people? Like uh, ordinances, city ordinances. No, city the laws. city ordinances mm. we have tried. There is mm. one in the pipeline which I made personally Indeed. as the Lord Mayor. It's before council, mm. making it mandatory that at all these facilities, there must be CCTV cameras. Indeed. Because right now there is no law. Police That's really important. Inanga in just makes a statement. Even in all these congested areas, we are saying, please, in the malls, in the uh, slum areas and whatnot, we are saying it should be mandatory. 
And in all schools, we are saying it should be mandatory to have CCTV cameras there. That's the law we are coming up with. It's already in the offing. Whether you like it or not, at least you must install those CCTV cameras there. The other thing is about the response now. Of course, the, 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 the detectors, people may not have mm -hmm. capacity, but that ordinance is also in the offing mm -hmm. of about the drills that should be made. Indeed. To, f police should be here, should be doing, th this is what they should be doing. In the schools, the, taking the students through yes, the uh, those fire drills. Fire, in drills, case of fire. drills, yes. Mm. They, they do it with us as KCCA, they can do it like with URA. But how about with schools? How about helping these little ones? In the U.S., they anticipate mass shootings, people moving into a school with guns and shooting, so they have sh mass shootings drills. Exactly. So in Uganda, why aren't we having fire drills? Fire drills, they should be there. Mm. So that, Romeo, you, you, you can be uh, well-educated, but even how... You, you see those mm. fire extinguishers Indeed. installed? They may be there, even in this building. Mm. But you know how to operate in terms of danger. Even in a situation whereby, you know, you're too nervous and you're scared. You're even the simplest of exactly. things could be hard for you to do. It, I understand. It, exactly. So we need the drills. Often in cases, you hear people just, we were using buckets to pour... But, uh, a bucket know, can't do anything. You need pressure. We need fire. pressure. Mm. Exactly that with uh, fire extinguisher. Indeed. So those drills should be there. In the, uh, still in the fire response, we wanted, we came up with the police ourselves yes. to develop this, the, 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 this service to division, to, mm -hmm. to be based at division. Because right now, they are at the headquarters and that place is called the fire. Hey, what you fire, could fire, as if they were meant to be there permanently along Kuroko Tower, their fire headquarters. Have you even been to their headquarters? Those guys usually never have Oof. any water. You they will show up to a single You wouldn't fire. like the environment they there. They will assess the situation and say, then let's go back and pick the water. Let me so tell by the time you. they come back, the whole building is gutted. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's again another. So the response of the, the you know, response. first responders. One, Why is it too they slow? have very few trucks. Mm. And uh, they need also to, to have a number of uh, staff, I mean the manpower, to deal with the same and also develop at a division level. I'll tell you, the, the mayor of mm. Kampala, the, the former mayor of Rubaga, Indeed. Joyce Evogwao, before she assumed her new roles now, and, and the other time when she was still mayor, mm. we worked out to arrangements and got a donation of two trucks, firefighting trucks. But now we couldn't run them. We uh, had uh, hardly anything to do with the firefighting as the institution. So they were donated to police. We, what they do with them, we don't know. So now, mm -hmm. the other thing about National Water and Sewage Corporation, when you host them here, you ask them, how many water hydrants do we have here? Good one. Very few. In the case of Namu, uh, Kawala, we quickly asked, where can we get a water hydrant? It was at Church Johnson, that junction near Gospel. I don't know whether you are familiar with it. Uh, uh, next to Makerere University. Indeed. And you can ma imagine navigating through those crowded places, traffic jam, ridden areas, the greedy rock there. It's not that easy. So you get the water mm. thing. So we need as many water hydrants as possible. Indeed. Nearly every place in the campus should have a water hydrant. And we need to be expanding our schools, Lord Mayor. But is that highly feasible in the wake of reports that even the Minister of Education say they didn't have any money to give schools to help with the expansion to accommodate SOPs? They couldn't give them money to help them just prepare, you know, replace old electrical wires with new ones to ensure that these school fires do not uh, happen. No, they didn't have that you, money. You seem to be and concluding now, that it is <coughs> the electrical circuits. Uh, not really. Now, yes. one of the biggest... Uh, uh, court recommendation right now is to increase the spaces where the learners are going to be living in that regard. Is it feasible for the government to create more schools or more spaces? This is where, where this way I started mm. from that government has neglected its duty of, of constructing school structures. Let me tell you, beginning even with the Kampala, I have told you just <coughs> one school that they have constructed <coughs> here. Even a building, uh, uh, I mean, a, a classroom block that this one is a new, of course there are very, very few mm. here, but a new school that we have established a new school, mm. this one. There isn't any. They are just phasing out those that were constructed by their predecessors. So we are just sitting ducks and waiting for another school to be gutted by fire and send condolences. And the starting point is to get somebody government can easily supervise. Mm. 
You know, many of these even other ministers and other people, they fear the first lady. They fear. Hmm. The first lady can't be the minister. They can't give her advice. They can't give her advice. They can't call her to order. They can't do anything. Even the president cannot sack her and so on. Because that, this is a matter which we would call for sacking of the minister. To show seriousness and say, the minister for education, you, was, you have slept on job for, for the on job for too long. Time to go. You kick her out. But how do you kick out your wife unless you are ready to kick her out of, from the home? You are going to have a pro problem in the home. The Lord Mayor of Kampala, Elias Lukwago, thank you so much for having made the time to speak to us. You had a very hard to attend to yesterday, but it's, it, uh, still, you made it to the morning show this morning, and that is highly honorable. Thank you for your time. Most so, I don't know, pleased to be here. Mm. Thanks very much for the time you have given Indeed. us. And also for giving attention to these issues all right which are of great national importance indeed and i hope colleagues and other policymakers especially president Museveni, you have picked a lesson from this hmm. suck your wife <laughs>